I really don't think she would have ever done anything like that. To just r pick up and run away with no trace of anything. She, she, was, she was really talkative. She's nice. But just to see what happened and how many cool people we have in this world is really devastating. Because she was only 13 and she lost her life at a young age. Nobody like expected that something like this would happen. And it was like a, like a, like a hole is missing because everybody at school even, they're like sad on Monday and Friday, teachers were crying. Everybody's like sad about it. So to get justice, it would like, there's still gonna be a hole in people's hearts, but it might close it a bit more just if there's justice. Back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today I'm going to offer you some updates in Madeline Soto's case. If you've never heard of her case before, please check out the previous videos that I've done. We did two live streams and these two video updates that I'm going to link in the description box for you. Sadly, you know, this was a missing persons case. This was a missing and endangered child, and we were all really hoping that she would be found, that maybe she just ran off and hid in the woods because the police found a message on her phone saying that when she turns 13, she wants to go and live in the woods or something to that effect. And I mean, she had just turned 13. But unfortunately, there was an update and they, they found her body. And that's not even the worst. What's come out since with the boyfriend of her mother, it's just, it's really terrible. So just brace yourself. Know that this definitely comes with a trigger warning. I'm going to do my very best to read as much as I can of some of the documents. I uh, hardly can. I could probably only read a sentence or two here or there because it is extremely graphic as well. I don't think YouTube would even allow you know me to say all of that on here. And it's just, it's so heartbreaking. So let's do our best with this. And let me tell you all the updates. Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like, and share. This is a picture of Madeline Soto at her 13th birthday party. Her grandmother said that two of her friends attended there. Some people have been on social media saying they're surprised there were not more friends there. But the thing is, if you know about everything that happened to her, which you will after this video, since she was at least eight years old, yeah, one can imagine that making many friends may have been difficult for her. She was definitely a traumatized person. So. Oh man, no one, it just seemed like no one protected her. We don't know if her mother knew or not, or if there's going to be any more charges. We just don't know. All we know right now is that Stefan Stearns is the prime suspect in her disappearance and that this is a homicide investigation. So we're going to recap some of the timeline as well, just to refresh ourselves and for those who don't quite know what this case is about. So Madeline lived in a three-bedroom apartment with her mom, Jennifer Soto, in Kissimmee, Florida. Stefan Stearns, who had an on-again, off-again relationship with Jen, allegedly had his own room in the apartment. Now, I find that really weird because they were not married. So even though there was, uh, I think it was either something that Jen had said online or in an interview, but she called him uh, Madeline's, like, stepdad, <laughs> you know, and no, no, he was boyfriend and almost ex-boyfriend. There was a friend that called a, into a YouTuber show and had said that, in fact, they'd broken up three to four months before Madeline's disappearance. So even more strange that Stefan was the one to pick her up from school that day. I don't know if you remember when we were initially going over the case details, when Madeline was reported as a missing and endangered child, I was saying, why did they say that, why did Jennifer uh, Soto say that you know, the boyfriend came to pick her up. I'm like, where did he come from? Like, doesn't he live there? Where did he come from? Oh, from his parents' house because they had an on-again, off-again relationship. And Stefan Stones 
had also told uh, one of these friends that he had a really strong bond with Madeline and it was really difficult for him with his breakup. Now, when you hear what he, I want to say allegedly, because that's the appropriate thing usually, but damn, what he did to Madeline, I can't believe he's pleading not guilty and there's actually a trial date set. We're going to get to that. When you hear about that, him saying that they had a very strong bond, um, no, he was a very big predator hounding a child. And I think that was his, you know, obviously primary motive for being there. And, you know, it's just one of those where I know people said on all the other videos as well, the comments are single mothers should be more careful about who they allow in the house or single parents, you know, and I do agree with that. I just want to remind everyone to focus on the perp right now. We don't know if there's going to be more people arrested, but I agree with that wholeheartedly. I just think that all of that anger needs to be directed directly to the perpetrator, which is Stefan Stearns, the most vile creature that I've just about ever heard of. I mean, and we've heard of some bad ones. This one really takes the cake. So apparently um, Jen worked at Disney World as a vacation planner. She said that she worked on the Sunday when Madeline had her 13th birthday party. And so I wonder if that's true because some of the things she said has turned out to not be true. And I also wonder if she worked like a day shift or if there was a night shift for a vacation planner. I don't know. Um, anyway, but she worked at Disney World, which is interesting because Stefan Stern said that he worked as a cast member at Disney World. And then Disney came forward and said, nope, nope, didn't work here. But he did. <laughs> They're just covering their ass. He absolutely did in the past because there's videos that have surfaced of him now working there. So maybe at the time of Madeline's disappearance and murder, he wasn't working there. But he was at some point. So he also ranted all about it, you know, on social media, on Reddit, you know, how difficult it was being a cast member and how people treat them and standing for long hours and all kinds of things. Now, uh, some of Stefan Stone's friends have been talking to YouTubers, sharing grim details about him. Now, I haven't put that on my presentation because it's so filthy. I have it on a notebook here and I'm just quickly going to read that to you. Just a few little notes that I took, okay, of some of these horrible things that his former friends, they knew, some of them knew him as, you know, in primary school or high school or as teens or some of them knew him right up to and hung out with him two weekends before Madeline disappeared. And so it seems like they're all saying, well, he was always quite a loner. He was kind of creepy, but they didn't expect this. You know, one did know that he had child sexual abuse materials on his computer at a time when he had stayed with him, but that friend didn't report him to anyone. And I know people are very angry about that. So what can we learn from that? If you see something, say something, because someone who's collecting see Sam on their computer or their devices or something like that. Yeah, they're a huge red flag. They are obviously breaking the law and they're probably going to escalate that online behavior and harm children. So it is something worth reporting. Absolutely. Don't just let it slide. So here's some of these grim details where they said that Stefan Stearns, the friends say, okay, I'm quoting the friends. They said that he collected semen they collected, he collected his semen in little like vials. Okay. Cause his mom had horses or something and the horse had an injury. And so she had these little glass vials or jars or something. So he would take those and put his semen in it. And he told his friend that, <laughs> oh my goodness. If you put semen in girls drinks, they could get pregnant. And he also told his friend that, he did that, that at school he would put this in girls' drinks. So if that's true, wow, that is so gross. And how weird to go around, you know, trying to get girls pregnant as well. That is strange also because I know many have speculated, why would he? We don't know that he did it, but it's the most plausible. And he's the prime suspect, right? Why would he murder Madeline? And I know many people have speculated, Maybe she got pregnant and, well, now your secret would be out. And so he had to, you know, silence her or something. We just don't know how dark this guy's mind is. I don't know. There's so many reasons I could come up with as to why 
he murdered her. Especially when we look at the documents, some of the stuff that he was into, it could even just have been a fantasy of his gone too far. We just don't know. So we'll have to be patient. I did see a news clip at some point where they said that the judge said it could take two years for, you know, an indictment for murder. Two years of investigating. I mean, it is possible. Investigations take time. This seems very obvious, obviously, to the public. But the thing is to really build their case. Yeah, it's going to take some time. Thankfully, he's got 60 other charges that he's facing. And those charges could mean life in prison or the death penalty. Oh, yes. So, yeah, he's sorted. He's going to be in jail or eventually, yes, in prison for a very long time. And his trial is on May 13th. We're going to get to that later. Just want to tell you that. Okay. So, apparently, he also filmed his friend's mother, like, over the fence, like, creepy dude with his digital camera. And the friend said he collected a lot of pornography and he liked to collect things and, yeah, started filming his mother. And the father saw and like shot at him or something and all kinds of things. Didn't shoot him, but shot at him and warned him and they didn't hang out anymore. Um, they also said, the friend said that he had an Adderall addiction and that he would stay awake, you know, for many hours at night and they didn't know doing what exactly, but uh, one can only imagine what. They said when they hung out, you know, as teens and they were playing games and things, then he would always try to bring up uh, pornography and try to show them pictures and try to involve them in what he liked, right? And yes, they said that the couple was actually separated, which really makes those interviews we've already looked at just so much more sus, right? Uh, so let me just see if I have anything else here. Nope, that's pretty much it. They did also say, the ones that had met Jen, that she was not very mentally stable, that one minute she'd be angry in the house, the next she'd be going out of the house, and then crying outside by the car, and then coming back in and being happy, and all of that. Um, Jen did share on social media, this post that's on the right, and she said it's world, I don't have a date for that actually, it says October 10th, I think it says 2019, but it says, it's World Mental Health Day, I may look okay, but bipolar depression is totally kicking my ass right now, so if you're struggling, know that you're not alone, it's okay to not be okay. Can you imagine if she really had no idea what Stefan Stearns was doing to her daughter? And if she really had no idea at the time of those interviews that her daughter had been murdered? Can you imagine that? There's a rumor that uh, Jen has lawyered up. There's a lot of rumors right now. It's also why. <laughs> Just careful with all the updates because I'm like, there's a lot of rumors. Like, where's the proof? We, we do have documents. So, so I did my best just to bring in everything that I can here. But there's a lot out there. <laughs> there's um, someone that also called into another YouTuber's channel and said that Stefan Stearns was part of this, like, human trafficking, sex trafficking ring, and all sorts of things. So maybe that's also why it would take two years, you know, for murder charges. Maybe the police are looking at uncovering that entire ring of people, if that's true, but that we don't know. So I don't know if Jen is Lloyd up or not. I'm not confirmed. She said that she last saw Madeline the morning of February 26th, and she described what she was wearing. What's interesting is if you re-watch those interviews, she didn't say any conversation that she had with uh, Madeline that day. She just said she was last seen wearing, and it was black shorts and a dark green hoodie and white Crocs, and she said she had a gray um, backpack. But... You know, the fact that she said that she saw her around 8 o'clock that morning getting dressed for school and that she left with Stefan at 8.45, that is an absolute lie. So she is in big trouble for that because that is not true. The timeline proves otherwise. So we're going to go over that. Now, there are two memorial sites for Madeline. One outside Hunter's Creek Middle School, which is a school that she went to, the one where Stefan Stones lied and said he dropped off near to the school. That didn't happen, and if you weren't clear, the grainy video of a girl wearing like a dark hoodie outside of the church, that wasn't Madeline at all. They weren't there, right? So, um, anyway, there's a memorial at the school and one at the location where her body was found. She was laid to rest on March 6th of 2024. I know some people are quite upset with her family right now because they had a GoFundMe to raise... Uh, $16,000 to 
to help pay for the funeral, but the funeral home had offered to fully cover the funeral costs. So, but it sounds like from the post I read on that GoFundMe that the aunt who organized it said, well, we already made all the arrangements before the funeral had offered, so they had their own private ceremony, so I still think the money went towards that. Um, so there's a little uh, picture that I found. Well, there's many pictures here of the memorials and things, which is just beautiful. That's why I'm wearing pink as well, by the way, because I just see a lot of pink. I don't know if people are just assuming it or if they know that maybe um, Maddie's favorite color was pink or something. So I'm wearing pink in honor of Madeline. So there on the right, it was something from, I believe, the funeral. And it said, always in my heart, I always think of you. I still call out your name for you are always here with me though things are not the same. I think of all the love we shared, even though you're out of sight, I could never say goodbye to you. I've only said good night. Although it hurts without you, we're never far apart. You will forever be with me. You are always in my heart. So Madeline Sophia Soto, such a beautiful name. February 22nd of 2011 to March 1st of 2024. I mean, this is just, oh my goodness. So Let's discuss the school absence alert because on the day that Madeline was reported missing, she was only reported missing that night on February 26th because her mother was apparently not aware that she never arrived at school because the school didn't alert her. So now that's obviously, you know, put pressure on the system here. I know some states alert parents immediately or at least within three hours. Others don't. It differs per state. It differs in the world, right? So they say the Orange County Public Schools is changing its absence notification system. In addition to the notification parents currently receive at the end of the day, starting April 8th, they will also get a notification their student is absent towards the beginning of the day. OCPS has said that they consider a student absent when they miss more than half of the school day. And 3.30 p.m. is the cutoff for teachers to submit attendance. Once it's finalized, a report is run and parents get the absence message. In addition to the changes coming in April, the superintendent said the district is working on implementing a way to allow parents to go through their portal to see in real time if their student has been marked absent period by period at the start of the next school year. Well, parents will even know if they're bunking class. The superintendent says parents will be getting information about the times that they can expect these calls for elementary, middle, and high school after spring break. So, you know, a lot of people are also... A little bit upset with this, like, why wasn't this in place already? But as we know, sometimes it does take a disaster for things to change. It's very sad, but at least things are now changing. Okay, now let's look at the actual timeline details. I say that because when Madeline was missing, we had some timeline details from Stefan Stearns and from Madeline's mother, and they were false. Okay, so Madeline turned 13 on Thursday, February 22nd, 2024. Police said there were messages on her phone where she told her friends that she wanted to live in the woods when she turned 13. On Monday, February 26th, police had a press conference and shared that they have evidence that Madeline was deceased in Stefan Stone's vehicle that morning and was never taken to school. So remember at the press conference when we watched, um, I think it was the second one together, they said, well, they can't confirm if the video at the church is of Madeline but they have other video from the area. And the way, if you go back and look at that, the way that the sheriff said it, it's like, we have other video from that area. Oh, now we know. It's this video that they probably had already then. And they were already investigating, you know, I think Stefan Stearns, because he was arrested pretty swiftly after that. We'll look at that timeline now. It says at 7.35 a.m. on that February 26th day, they have Stefan Stearns on video discarding Madeline's school-issued laptop and her backpack. Now, we don't know exactly where, but they did say it was at the Kissimmee Apartments where they lived, which is obviously Jen and Madeline and Stefan Stearns on and off, where has his own room or I don't know what. Oh my goodness, there's also rumors that Madeline slept in the same bed as Stefan and Jen. I don't know why that would be if it's a three-bedroom apartment. I have no idea if that's true or not, but that sounds horrifying too. So, 7.35 a.m. Now remember, Jen Soto said that she saw Madeline getting dressed at 8 a.m. Well, no. <laughs> no, no. 
because the police then said at 8.19 a.m., police have evidence that shows Stefan Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was in the vehicle and police say already deceased and propped upright. They say they could see clearly she was deceased. We don't know what that means, okay? I don't know what kind of video that means or how they knew, but they knew that she was already deceased. Now, what's interesting is that at 7.35, he's at that apartment complex throwing away her laptop and backpack. The laptop was apparently in the backpack, right? And police were able to retrieve those items. But when they say at 8.19, he was he returned to the complex and she was in the car, where did he go with her in the car? Why was he doing that? You know what I mean? Like, at what point then was she murdered? If he's doing that at 7.35 at the complex and at 8.19 returning, returning from where? Where did he drive with her? What happened on that day? That is still a mystery, you know. So Madden's mother, Jen, said that they called the police before 5 p.m., but she was officially reported missing. I'm saying between 7 and 8 p.m. because I see conflicting reports. Some say 7 p.m., some say 8 p.m. Orange County deputies met Jen at the Hunters Creek Middle School and they started canvassing the area. Now, on Tuesday, February 27th, a missing poster was released for Madeline. At 10 p.m. that same day, Jen and Stefan's interview with Fox 35 aired, which was with um, Hannah McKenzie. She interviewed them. And we all watched that. And already then we were like, what the heck is going on here? Because Stefan Stearns was in the background, you know, cracking his knuckles. And, you know, as many body language experts have uh, said that that would mean he's releasing some kind of tension or anger. Maybe it's also a way to intimidate Jen and he's, as he's sitting behind her, cracking his knuckles like that. It was very disturbing. So, and many asked, did he know that he was on camera like that? Probably. I mean, we don't know if he knew, but he sure was there just hovering over her like that. So that was the first interview that we were able to see. And on Wednesday, February 28th at 3.30 p.m., the Orange County Sheriff's Office held a press conference about the ongoing search for Madeline. Now, Stefan Stearns was arrested at 9.52 p.m. It was on February 29th that we got to see his arrest warrant, which was released. I shared that with you on March 1st. Um, in a video that I made for you. So if you missed that, we read through the whole thing. Madeline's body was found uh, the same day on February 29th at approximately 4.30 p.m., which was off Hickory Tree Road in Osceola County. Now, that's the same area where they said that he had a flat tire. They believe he had a flat tire there. They asked people to come forward with more information and right after the press conference, someone called in a tip and said, I saw him in this certain area. They rushed out there. They looked in the area. They found Madeline's body. So again, that's why it's so important to share. You know, when we are sharing missing persons, posters, flyers, you know, the information, the press conferences, you just don't know who's going to see it and call in that tip that could really help the investigation. And thankfully, they were able to find Madeline's body that soon rather than a month from now, six months from now, a year from now or never, right? So that they could really do a good um, forensic analysis and the medical examiners can get really clear results of what happened to Madeline. Now, I did read somewhere, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of information that's come out that Madeline's family, which I can only assume is her mother, they've not consented to her um, cause and manner of death being released or the autopsy re results being released to the public. I believe in Florida that's called Marcy's Law because, of course, this is a minor. And I totally understand that with minors, they often don't release those details. But I wonder if we'll ever know how Maddie died. Like, what did whoever do to her? You know, the obvious answer in my mind would be strangulation, but you just never know. So they said that um, she was found, she was last seen wearing, uh, she was, she was, the body was found um, in what she was uh, last seen wearing. The sheriff said similar clothing, which would have been a dark green hoodie, black shorts, and white Crocs. I did read somewhere online as well that someone said, well, then why, why was she found in jeans when the mother said she wore shorts? And I don't know how they know that she was found in jeans or not. I haven't seen any such details. I've just seen the sheriff say that she was found in similar clothing. 
So, yes, I've already addressed that it's the same area where Stefan Stearns had a flat tire. On March 1st, WFTV9 had an interview that was released of Jen Soto and Stefan Stearns, a much longer one. The one where he's doing all the crocodile tears, and it is so disgusting to watch. It is... It's actually one of those that would be like a true, a, a true crime classic. It really goes in the history books of just seeing, like a Chris Watts or something, um, or Trezell and Jacqueline West, just someone just absolutely faking those emotions and lying through their teeth. Oh, it's just horrible. If you haven't seen it, do go check it out. Okay, we've watched it together uh, before. Uh, as I say, the videos are linked for you below. We don't know where she can be. We're scared. We just want her home. Now, the St. Cloud community held a vigil for Madeline on March 1st. The church, that uh, Peace United Methodist Church, I think it's called, they held a memorial service for her. The school did. There's been multiple vigils and memorials for Madeline. This really affected the local community to Madeline in Florida a lot, you know, and there were some kids that were interviewed and they just said that she was nice. She was talkative. They can't believe this happened. It's like a hole in their heart and all of that. Um, on Saturday, March 2nd, crickets for Stefan Stearns, he waived his first court appearance. Like why? I know they've got rights, but I hate it. <laughs> why is he allowed to do that? He waived his first court appearance. Didn't want to go. Also, side note, Madeline's grandmother said that she, that Madeline didn't like sleeping alone, that she was afraid of the dark. Well, now we know why, especially when we hear the charges. We've already, like, touched on them a little bit with the other document that I've been through with you before in other videos. But, like, today, yeah, you're going to know why uh, Maddie probably didn't want to sleep alone. And also, the grandmother said that Stefan was very mean to her in 2022, which is interesting to hear as well. Just adding this all together. So, he's the prime suspect in this homicide investigation. The police have said that. Uh, during the investigation into Madeline's disappearance, the Orange County Sheriff's Office detectives discovered disturbing images and video from sexual crimes that took place at the home when they forensically examined 37-year-old Stefan Stones' phone. A review of the phone's data revealed attempts to delete evidence. He accidentally factory reset his phone on that same day that Madeline went missing. <laughs> As Vinny Politan from Court TV says, how do you accidentally factory reset a phone? <laughs> like, literally, how, how would you do that? You can't just, like, bump your phone. Oh, factory reset. No, you really got to make effort to do that factory reset. So, yet another lie. He was, and what a dumbass, right? That he actually thought, oh, he's going to just, like, control or delete and no one will find anything. Oh, they want to find it. They're going to find everything. He was arrested on, uh, I think, early, actually, my slide said February 29th. February 28th or 9th, um, 2024, I think it was 29th, and charged with uh, sexual battery, and he's being held on no bond. The Orange County Sheriff's Department is investigating Madeline's disappearance, while the Kissimmee Police Department is investigating the sexual battery case. So, as I mentioned earlier, in a previous video, we looked at that he, he had said here on his Facebook, cast member at Walt Disney World, and then Walt Disney World came forward and said, no, 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 he doesn't work here. But he did in the past. There's a picture of him on the right hand side working there and um, Sustinet or whatever his name is there. I don't even know. How does he come up with that crap? <laughs> He's like Sustinet on Reddit. He's posted a lot and he has quite the ego. You know, he's always dishing out relationship advice to everyone and just advice left and right. This guy, you know, thinks he's the teacher of all teachers, mm, life coach for the whole world, but. Mm -mm. No, sorry. Now we're looking at you. Well, he doesn't want us to look at him because he won't even appear in court. Uh, so he posted as a CM, which is a cast member, I will only call young girls princess when they are literally dressed up like a princess. I figure they aren't dressed up to not be recognized for it. Lol. Oh, how funny, given the situation now. Otherwise, if I need the parents to help with a lap restraint or something, I'll say the young one or little one or our young friend. Oh, my word, he's so creepy. He said it really depends on the situation and context. <laughs> yes, it does. And now we all have much more context of how inappropriate that was. And I feel sorry for any kids 
that to, had to cross paths with him at Disney World. Okay, so a trial date has been set. It's been set for Stefan Stearns for May 13th of 2024 in Osceola County. If May 13th comes to mind, you're like, wait, 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 what's happening on May 13th? Yeah, Richard Allen in Delphi, that's his same trial date. So Stefan Stearns, I can't believe this is going to trial. That is actually pleading not guilty. You know? So anyway, that's the trial date said. They said he waived his arraignment, which was scheduled for April 2nd. So his attorney will submit a written plea on his behalf. Please just change that to guilty. Just don't put everyone through this. Just plead guilty, okay? And then just spend the rest of your life where you belong. This is a pretrial hearing. Oh, sorry. There is a pretrial hearing scheduled for April 24th, where the prosecution and defense will appear simultaneously before a judge to determine if they will proceed with a jury trial. Stefan Stearns abused Madeline Soto sexually. And that's all we know. We don't know if it's emotionally, verbally, spiritually, in every other way. You know what I mean? Mental, all the things. We know about the sexual abuse because of what was on his phone. That dates all the way back to 2019, which means she was eight years old. And how do we know it didn't start before then? Because as you'll see on the documents, he had images on his phone, sometimes involving, you know, children under the age of five. But at least 2019. Madeline was abused for a very long time, violated, and filmed. Because remember, they know about all this and have all these charges because of all the content found on his phone. According to Kissimmee Police, disturbing images and video discovered on his phone led to 60 new charges. And all those charges, if you add them up, it's over 400 images and videos. It's a lot of content, so I also feel very sorry for the law enforcement officers who had to go through that, because you can't unsee that. That must be very disturbing. If he's found guilty on these charges, he will face life in prison or the death penalty. Interesting. So why are there no murder charges yet? I know everybody's asking that. I was asking myself that as well. But I do know these things take time. And of course, to get this to trial, especially for a homicide case well they're gonna have to prepare a lot if you watched any trials with us i cover quite a lot of trials uh, come and watch the one we're currently watching it should be closing arguments on monday and it's very snark worthy that defendant much like this one also is just like what they all are but some are just much worse than others right so as i say if you watch trials with us then you'll know they need a lot of evidence before they can prosecute someone right successfully as we see there's that that is lacking in the Delphi case a little bit. So that is why there's so much to talk about there as well. But here, why? No murder charges yet. Well, investigators are building their case for prosecution. We don't know if anyone else was involved. If so, this will take time to investigate. And by that, it could mean the mother. It could mean a whole ring of guys that were sharing all these images and photos. Was he taking it for himself? Was he sharing it with everyone? Are they all going to be charged? I don't know. They want to make sure that justice is served to its fullest extent. The only information the police released uh, after Madeline's body was found was, we have no additional information to release at this time. Uh, Kissimmee Poli PD is the lead agency in this homicide investigation. That work continues. So there was no press conference right after Madeline's body was found. They just put out a statement, and that was that. So let me show you the latest statement put out by the police. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. It's a difficult one to say. Kissimmee, kiss me, Kissimmee, Kissimmee. Kissimmee. There you go. <laughs> 60 new charges filed against Stefan Stearns. This was from March 12th of 2024. The state attorney's office for the 9th Judicial Circuit has filed 60 new criminal charges against Stefan Stearns. Date of birth 04-25-1986. The man associated with the Madeline Soto case. Shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images, yeah, over 400, and videos were found on Stefan Stearns' phone. The city of Kissimmee Police Department quickly arrested Stearns, who remains in custody with the Osceola County Department of Corrections on no bond. The investigation revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. The Kissimmee Police Department provided this evidence to the state's attorney's office, which found cause to the following charges. Eight counts of sexual battery on a child under 12. Five counts of sexual battery 
with a child 12 to 18. Seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation. 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child, 10 or more images. We appreciate the efforts of our partners in the state attorney's office in assisting with seeking justice for Madeline, said Kissimmee uh, Chief of Police, Betty Holland. With this being a complex case with many facets, our work is not done, and we are continuing our investigation into the timeline leading up to Madeline's death. To learn more about the city of uh, Kissimmee Police Department, visit you can visit there. You can also sign up to receive emails from them as updates. Now, one other horrifying thing that happened in this case is that the sheriff, let me just show you this quickly. They say Madeline Soto crime scene photo accidentally shared on um, Osceola County Sheriff's social media. Oh my. So this was just very sad. I get that it was a mistake, but I don't understand why these photos were on the sheriff's phone like that. Or like a personal phone to post to Instagram. Anyway, so they said, the Florida State Attorney's Office has asked the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to open an investigation after an apparent photo of the area where Madeline Soto's body was found last week was allegedly posted on social media. In a screenshot of the Instagram post, which was shared with Fox 35 Orlando, one of the photos appears to show a body in a grassy wooded area. Fox 35 has viewed the photo and made the decision not to show it or post it. Madeline Soto was reported missing and they go over the timeline, but um, yeah. That was unfortunate. They say the Osceola County Sheriff's Office confirmed to Fox 35 in a statement earlier this week that an investigative photo was accidentally included in the photo collage, which was intended to showcase Sheriff Lopez's attendance at a community event for seniors. A post was made on social media about a community event for seniors. In the post, an investigative photo was accidentally included. The photo was immediately removed. We deeply apologize for any confusion or disturbance this may have caused, the sheriff's office said. Sheriff Lopez has not personally commented on the matter. Unfortunately, some YouTubers got hold of the picture before it was deleted and all that. And then they blur out the body but still show it to everyone, which, oh man, it's just horrible. That that should have never happened. That should never be out there. Because even if it's blurred, you can kind of make out, you know, what's going on there. There's no reason to share that. And they said, um, state attorney Andrew Bain's office told Fox 35 earlier this week that Bain was deeply disturbed that such a photo was carelessly made public, according to that, uh, to a statement. However, he did not believe the alleged incident would impact the investigation. Yeah, it would just, uh, you know, degrade the victim, which is never what we want. Okay. Are you ready for the documents now? Are you sure? They're really bad. Trigger warning, major, major trigger warning. Okay? I just want to show it to you so that you can see what we're dealing with. When you see Stefan Stearns, mm, mm, mm. you know, it's <laughs> it's almost too much. So, okay, I'm just going to bring it up, bring up the documents. And I've highlighted um, some things for you just so that you can see the differences in the charges as well. All right? So, from the top. There we go. This was filed on the 11th of March. Now look at this list. It, and it's long. Look here. If you scroll, it just... Look at those charges. Look at everything found on his phone. And each one represents 10 or more images. Hmm? Okay, so let me quickly show you this. So there's 60 new charges. From 1 up to 8 is sexual battery on a child under 12. Then from 9 up to 14 is sexual battery with a child 12 to 18. And then it says familial or custodial authority. Okay. And then 14 up to 20, lewd or lascivious molestation. From 21 to 60 is unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child 10 or more images. So this dude, not only did all these things, and even though they initially released a, well, the police released a redacted copy of the document. Okay, so the victim's name was redacted, but the victim's birth date was there and all the charges matched that birth date. Okay, so we know that majority of this abuse is 
happened to Madeleine Soto. Uh, there was a news agency that actually released an unredacted copy, just like out there on X and just posted it everywhere, which is kind of shocking to see. But then I could see that and see, okay, okay, they mentioned Madeleine as the victim. So if we just look at this quickly here, oh my goodness. So they say Andrew Asher Bain, state attorney of the Ninth Judicial Circuit, prosecuting for the state of Florida in Osceola County by and through the undersigned designated assistant state attorney under oath charges that Stefan Michael Stearns, a person 18 years of age or older, on or about the 19th day of June of 2019. You see the date? 2019. Uh-huh. Yeah. Madeline was eight. In said county and stated in violation of Florida statute 7940112 commit a sexual battery upon a female identified as see it's redacted a person less than 12 years of age and in furtherance thereof Stephen Michael Stearns with his penis penetrated the mouth of a female identified as now so I say trigger warning I put on a big emotional shield today to be able to report on this okay so that you just know I just want to share in because I think it's important to know, like, if if we're going to speculate that, what if Jen Soto didn't know? Well, let's make sure we share all this information so we can educate single moms of just the horrors that can happen with these predators who absolutely groom you, love bomb you, move into your home to get to your children. And you will not believe what they get up to with your kids, right? So here, and again, I'm going to say he filmed it. He took pictures of the acts while they were happening. Okay, he filmed things, he photographed them, he collected this. So here, with his penis, penetrated the mouth of a female identified as. Uh, with his, you know, penetrated or had union with the sexual organ of a female. So it just goes on, okay? Same, penetrated the mouth. Same, just there, count after count after count. Here, that's the same one. Here penetrated the, I think I could read all these words out. I'm going to get in big trouble here on YouTube. They're going to block this video and flag my channel big time. And then I won't be able to report on cases. Okay. So he, he did it all, all of it, all of it. Okay. Same so there. I'm going to, you could pause to read if you want. Okay. I'm just going through it as quickly as I can here. Oh my word. When I read all this first, I was like, I felt so sick for days, you know, with his, with his finger. He, oh my goodness. Okay, so there's all of that. And if we keep going, let's go to that count. What was it? 21. And here, with his hand, touch the butt buttocks of a female. Touch or hit or what did he do? Because they, they say sexual battery later. So what what did he do? Um, Here, he touched the clothing covering the sexual organ of a female. Identified as they also said that they compared what they found on the phone. Two items found in the house, looking at underwear, at bed sheets, at all sorts of things, and they were able to verify. You know, they also looked at his, you know what, and it had a distinct, uh, like, pink line or whatever on it, and they were able to verify a lot of things, which must be horrific work. Can you imagine doing this work? Oh my goodness, for me, the documents are already just like, whew, oh my word. Okay, so. 19 and we go to 20 mm -hmm. you see yes and then we go to count 21 from 21 to 60 they're all the same and things really get really bad here so they say they actually have the image you see the image number here 2019 okay which in whole part stefan michael stearns knows to include any sexual conduct by a child and in doing so possessed 10 or more images of any form of i wish they would stop calling it that because it's csam child sexual abuse materials and the content of at least one image contains one or more of the following which is a child who's younger than the age of five sadomasochistic abuse that's why i speculated what i did earlier involving a child sexual b i'm just gonna say b for now involving a child sexual bestiality involving a child or any movie involving a child regardless of length and regardless of whether the movie contains sound 
Now they say that what he had here and in doing so possessed 10 or more images, okay? And the content of at least one image contains one or more of the following. So one or more. It doesn't necessarily mean that it contained, for example, bestiality. But it could. It's on the list. I mean, younger than five, sadomasochistic abuse, sexual battery, bestiality, any movie. Five things. One or more of those things from count 21 all the way to count 60. Look at this. All the same. See that? All the same. All the way up to count 60. And each one, 10 or more images. Over 400 images and videos of this. So, I just hope that he just pleads guilty. Just please, just plead guilty. Put him away forever and ever and ever. And that's just on these charges. So that's why they say they actually have enough to keep him in prison for the rest of his life without the murder charges. That will come later. I think that's going to take it to the next level. That's going to take it to the death penalty level. Although this could already earn him the death penalty. I'm just quickly checking my notes to see if there's anything that I left out. And I do see that they say that uh, there is one person listed currently as visiting Stefan Stearns in the jail, and it's his dad. So, <laughs> somebody's visiting him. If I was his dad, I wouldn't. Just don't. Just look at what he did. Even if it's your son, no, no, these things are unforgivable. So, I think I've shared everything else with you that I wanted to share for now. I will keep you posted if there's any more updates especially if it's coming from law enforcement or, of course, the state's attorney, and especially when there's going to be murder charges and maybe cuffs on others. Who knows if there will be. If there really is an entire ring of people, yeah, yeah, arrest them all. Oh, my goodness. It's just, isn't it just so sickening? So thank you. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching, for being here with me. You know, as I discuss this, I find it personally very difficult and... Uh, quite triggering and all of that. It's just, oh my goodness. So, thinking, you know, of Maddie, I just can't believe such a sweet, beautiful girl and murdered right after her 13th birthday. I mean, and the amount of abuse that you could see from the documents that she suffered for the last at least four to five years. I mean... It's, it's terrible. So yes, if you're a single parent, be very careful of who you are allowing to be near your children. It just is like that. Be very careful. There are people out there who will pose as the nicest, sweetest people or a victim. To me, it seems like Stefan Stearns was one of those that's going to be like quite the baby boy, you know, and find someone who has um, empathy and would nurture him. Now, we, I say that as well because in that one, there was a news clip where Jennifer Soto was comforting him, like rubbing his shoulder and rubbing his back, you know, when he's like so sad and scared because he doesn't know where Maddie is. He knows exactly. He put her body there. His tire went flat there. So that's all a lie. But the way she was comforting him and everything, you know, it's just like you could just imagine that he com completely preyed on her mental health challenges as well as which she has spoken about right and she's apparently on and off meds and doesn't have the right meds all of that he preyed on that as well as possibly if she has it her empathy you know and maybe she had no idea i don't really know what to think about that we've thought about things before i do think there's quite a lot of red flag uh behavior there especially on the day but imagine maybe she was really scared of him that day when he's like sitting behind her and maybe she realized you just don't know but yes be very careful because these types of guys that also when you break up with them go back to their mommies and they're not really they don't really have a stable job they don't really they're just looking to live with you and your kids and they're gonna be that you know work from home kind of dad i'll i'll drop the kids off there was only maddie there as well right I think, um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Initially I thought, is that like a, like a younger brother or something in the background? It, it was apparently a parrot or a, like an automatic feeder or something. I think it was an automatic feeder for a dog or something like that. 
I heard on behavior panel, they speculated it was a, a parrot. And then I saw on social media, people were saying, no, that's like an automatic pet feeder voice. So anyway, him swooping in there to have access to her. And we've seen this in Audrey Cunningham's case. We've seen it in Valerie Tyndall's case, which by the way, that guy, remember Valerie Tyndall's case? I want to link that below for you too. That guy did the right thing, sort of. It's hard to say the right thing, but he pleaded guilty and he's been sentenced to 57 years in prison. Thank you for sparing everyone and the family, especially the family, that. So can Stefan Stones please just, he doesn't have a spine. He's a completely spineless creature. And one can only imagine with how self-righteous he was on Reddit and everywhere that, you know, he would have um, been very manipulative, very controlling, and quite the chameleon who might have completely fooled Jennifer Soto and really said, I'm a humble guy. Like, you know, I'll just stay at home. I'll be a stay at home dad. You go to work. You know, I support your dreams. I'll be here. I'll cook and clean and vacuum, do all the things, whatever. Not that that has to mean <laughs> that women have to do that. Okay, don't start arguing with me about that. Now you get the point. He would offer to be the helper. Meanwhile, he's helping himself to Madeline. And that's what those types of guys do. Be very, very careful. And if you see something, say something. If you see someone with that type of stuff on their phone or devices, or you see someone being inappropriate with children, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call the police. That's the right thing to do. Okay. Okay. Deep breath, everyone. I'll see you again very soon. Stay safe.